What's going on, Bottom Line viewers? It's Mitch here of the Bottom Line View, back with another NFL video. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the NFL Network's top 100 players of 2017. Of course, if you are a subscriber of this channel, you would know that I have put out my very own top 100 players of 2017 in the NFL. And I just wanted to make a compare and contrast video between the two lists the NFL Network list, a.k.a. the players list, the 902 players that voted on the top 100, and also compare it to my list to see how it matched up, whose list is better. I want to know from you guys in the comment section below. You can see some pictures uh, side by side with the conversation I'm about to have to see the lists side by side so you can determine which lists are better. So starting off with the lists, there was about... 20-ish players that were on my list that weren't on the top 100 list and so on and so forth. So there was 20 players on their list that weren't on my list. So to look at those players first that weren't on my list, I have them all circled here on a sheet of paper. Adrian Peterson came in at number 98 and he was the first person not to be ranked on my list. I really feel like Adrian Peterson has no spot on the top 100 this year because he barely played. He played like one and a half games. He got injured. Um, even if he did play one and a half games, I don't even remember to be quite honest with you. And even when he did play, if you look at his statistics, he really did very little. He had a very low yards per carry average. I understand his name, Adrian Peterson. I understand he's one of the greatest running backs of all time, but I think the players gave Adrian Peterson too much credit for what he did last year when he did absolutely nothing. Um, so I would have Adrian Peterson off the list. At number 92, they put on Everson Griffin, another Minnesota Viking. And it might sound like I am a Minnesota Vikings hater here, but I really didn't feel like Everson Griffin had a great season last year. He might have had a good opening half to the season where the Vikings defense was dominant and arguably the best in the league up until about week six. But then after that point, it really seemed like the Vikings defense as a whole kind of shut down and broke apart and they were, they were just in shambles the rest of the season. Everson Griffin had a great season last year, but to say that he was a top 100 player this year with a decrease in most statistical categories, it's kind of hard to say that he still belongs on the top 100, but I might be able to let that one slide, but I'd say that's kind of an interesting choice there with Everson Griffin. Then we have Lor uh, Lorenzo Alexander. I totally understand this choice. He was leading the league in sacks at one point in the season, but again, this is another guy that fell off towards the second half of the season. He barely even played much for the Buffalo Bills in the second half of the season. This is kind of a one-hit wonder in the NFL, Lorenzo Alexander. He's been a special teams player for his entire career, and all of a sudden he gets sack after sack after sack in about 10 games, and he's leading the league in sacks. And then six games down the road when people are actually game planning for him, he disappears off the map. So for me, Lorenzo Alexander, sure, you could say that he was maybe a top 100 player for this season, but I don't expect him to be very good going into next year, so that's why I left him off my list. Then at number 86 is Jarrell Casey, which I have no problem with being on the list. I just really had a tough time deciding between all the defensive ends. Um, one thing I did notice about this list, which we'll get to in just a little bit, is all the quarterbacks that are on this list compared to my list. I only have 10 quarterbacks on my list. And I think this list has at least 15 quarterbacks, so almost double my, uh, my amount. Um, but the defensive players, I definitely represented pretty well on my list. I think it was about split between offensive and defensive, and I definitely made sure to represent the linemen um, as I had many more offensive linemen, especially on my top 100. Uh, Mike Daniels from the Minnesota, or not Minnesota Vikings, from the Green Bay Packers. I'm getting all these Minnesota Vikings stuck in my head. But Mike Daniels from the Green Bay Packers came in at 84. I did not have him on my, my list because I really didn't think the Packers defense was very good. And sure, Daniels is a good player, but Daniels, I mean, he didn't make much of an impact. He wasn't really a game changer. And I know that a not, a, not a lot of defensive players are. Mike Daniels is a good run stopper. But I really didn't think he deserved to be over a guy like Leonard Williams, who is not on this list. 
Uh, next, we have Clay Matthews, who I have rated as one of the most overrated players in the league. Yes, he's Clay Matthews. Yes, he was good in 2009. He's no longer good anymore. Um, he's okay. He's average, but he's no longer elite. He doesn't deserve to be on the top 100, at least in my personal opinion. Yes, he, he plays outside and middle linebacker, but that's more because they can't really find a spot for him. They're trying to find a spot for him on the defense. When he plays outside linebacker, he's not producing pressure. He's not getting after the quarterback. His sack numbers continue to dip. And when he's at middle linebacker, he's not, a, he's not good enough in coverage to play that position. So for me, Clay Matthews is just a guy in the middle of his career that's kind of dropped off in play the last couple of seasons. So I would say that he doesn't deserve to be on this list. Alex Smith and LeGarrette Blunt. These guys were three in a row. Clay Matthews, Alex Smith, and LeGarrette Blunt. These guys I all didn't have on my list. Alex Smith, I don't understand how you could put on this list. I understand that the Chiefs are good and Alex Smith wins games, but let's actually look at how they won their games last year. A lot of it was because of defensive turnovers. A lot of it was sure Alex Smith would manage the game, but you'd get a big play by T Tariq Hill. You would get a good run game going. It's not Alex Smith that's winning these games. Um, Alex Smith, if anything, was the reason why they lost in the divisional playoff. The guy didn't throw over eight yards per attempt. So for me, I didn't have Alex Smith on my list. And that was another reason. I think he was like the 16th quarterback or something on this list. I only put 10. So I, I'm only having 10 quarterbacks on the list. I think players overrate the quarterback position a lot because... They have so many on their list. I know that they're big names, but you got to represent the rest of the NFL. You can't just represent the best quarterbacks. Um, LeGarrette Blunt is at number 80. Yes, he had a great season statistically. Um, no arguing that. I am a Patriots fan. But even as a Patriots fan, uh, LeGarrette Blunt is not one of the elite running backs in the league. Yes, he had a good season. Yes, he scored a lot of touchdowns. But a lot of those touchdowns were due to the fact that Tom Brady and that offense would get it all the way down the one-yard line and LeGarrette Blunt would pound away, which is what his specialty is. Uh, Blunt also was very good in the second half of games this past year. And it's not saying that LeGarrette Blunt doesn't deserve recognition because he does. But when you look at this position, the running back position, it's a position that there aren't many elite players in the league. And it's, a, it's also a position that you don't really need an elite player at the position to win a lot of games. And the Patriots have proven that. So LeGarrette Blunt, I, I didn't have many running backs on my list. I think I only had six or seven. Uh, LeGarrette Blunt would have been somewhere around 10 to 12. And I just don't feel he is one of the top 100 players in the league. Then we go to Brian Arakpo, who is number 78 on their list. I, this was a shocker to me. I kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, the Titans improved. Um, I can't really speak a lot on this. I, I, I don't really know if Brian Arakpo, it was kind of a random choice. I mean, he was good in his Washington days, but in, in Tennessee now, yes, he had a bounce back season. He wasn't injured, but is he really a top 100 player? And he's, is he really better than some of the linebackers that you left off the list? Looking at the guys that they left off the list for the linebackers division, is he really better than Whitney Merciless? Is he really better than Ryan Kerrigan? Uh, is he really better than Levante David? Uh, is he really better than K.J. Wright? I don't think so. That's my personal opinion. So I wouldn't have had Brian Arakpo on my list. Then we're going down to HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, who I was like this close to putting on my list. But he was edged out by Malcolm Jenkins for the last safety on my list. So you could argue that HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix does deserve to be on this list. And I wouldn't really have a lot to say to you. Um, Delaney Walker, another interesting choice. And to be as high as 75 is interesting. Delaney Walker was excellent last year, but this year he was kind of in the middle of things for the tight end position. If anything, I think Kyle Rudolph should have been maybe on the list instead of Delaney Walker if you're going to throw a tight end in there. But I only had four or five tight ends on my list, so I can't really speak to this. Um, Delaney Walker is a good player. He's a good all-around tight end. Uh, he's the leading receiver in the Tennessee Titans offense, but I don't believe that he was a top five tight end last year, and I don't think that five tight ends should be on the top 100 considering there are only about four elite tight ends in the league. Then we go to Kirk Cousins, uh, who I believe should be on this list. Even looking back at my list, I probably should have put him on my list. Um, having nearly 5,000 yards, leading a very good offense and uh, backing up his claim to being a good quarterback and to being a franchise quarterback. It was really more my mistake than the top 100 to put him on the list. I probably should have had him on the list. So I will uh, say that, but Kirk Cousins was probably the number 11 quarterback for me. He just didn't make the cut for me, but he 
you know, I'm not going to argue him being on the list. Then we have Jay Ajay at number 69. Uh, didn't have him on the list only because he had a couple of really good games, like 200-yard outputs. But then through the course of the season, he had games where he stunk it up. And I just feel like you need to be more consistent, especially that first year of breaking out. This is only his first year of breaking out, and you're already going to put him at number 69. That's a little bit bold for me. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do that myself, and I left him off the list because he was my sixth or seventh I think seventh or eighth best running back in the league. So I didn't have him on the list. Uh, Xavier Rhodes is number 66. Um, this is an interesting one. I, I was really close to putting Rhodes on the list as well. And a lot of people have actually told me that I should have put him on the list. Um, the only guy he got edged out um, with that was on my list that isn't on this list is A.J. Bouye. I feel like A.J. Bouye being on the number one defense in the league last year was a little bit better than... Uh, Mr. Xavier Rhodes, but Bouye also got paid in the offseason, seeing as how he played so great. Uh, Rhodes is a solid cornerback, and I wouldn't really have a lot to say, but I wouldn't really rank him as high as he has been ranked at number 66. If I would have put him on my list, he probably would have been from 100 to 90, somewhere in there. Uh, the next one, not for a while, is Josh Norman. Uh, Josh Norman, I feel, is a name that a lot of people know, and he had a really good season in 2015, but he wasn't the same guy in 2016. He was beat a lot more. His scheme changed. Um, yes, he's still a solid corner. Yes, he's probably still a number one corner in this league, but I don't think he deserves to be on the top 100. I think it's more because of the highlights and the name recognition and the personality more than the actual player for me. Then at number 57, they put Jameis Winston on the list. I didn't have him on there. Um, I think Jameis Winston's going to be on the list next year. I could definitely say that, but I don't think he should be on the list this year. If you look at his stats and compare, to him, compare him to other quarterbacks on my list, they don't really match up. Yes, Jameis Winston's a good football player. Yes, he has all the skills in the world to be a, a great quarterback, but I don't think he deserves to be there at this moment in time. Number 50, the same thing for Marcus Mariota. Yes, I think he's a good quarterback. Yes, I think he's very smart. Um, I, I like his ability. Um, he could pass the ball. He, he keeps his interceptions down. He has a good touchdown interception ratio, but he's not as good as some of the quarterbacks that were on my list. Again, I only put 10 and they have, let me, let me actually count how many quarterbacks I can find on this list. One sec. Okay. So they had Phillip Rivers, who I actually forgot to bring up and Phillip Rivers. The only reason I didn't have on my list is because he threw too many interceptions. I love Phillip Rivers. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks in the league. He might be my second or third favorite. Uh, Tom Brady, obviously my favorite. I love Matthew Stafford and Phillip Rivers are probably my three favorite quarterbacks in the league. But he threw too many interceptions last year and his team did too poorly uh, in terms of a record. Uh, so looking at the quarterback position on this list, they have Phillip Rivers, Kirk Cousins, um, Jameis Winston, Andrew Luck. Marcus Mariota is rated over Andrew Luck, which I think is pretty bold. Who I think Andrew Luck is miles better. Um, Andrew Luck, Marcus Mariota, Cam Newton, who I didn't have on my list because if you look at his stats, why would he be on the list? He had a Mark Sanchez type season. Continuing on, um, turning the page, Matt Stafford, uh, Drew Brees, Dak Prescott, Derek Carr, Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Ben Roethlisberger, and Russell Wilson. So I don't even know. Is that like 16 or 17 quarterbacks that made this list? I think that's a little bit much in my opinion. Um, so I went over Cam Newton, and that was the last guy. Cam Newton was the highest rated player that I did not have on my list. I really feel like Cam Newton should not be on this list this year. Yes, he was MVP last year, but if you look at the stats, I could actually look him up in the middle of this video. Um, it, they, they just aren't impressive enough to have Cam Newton on this list. You ask any Panthers fan and ask them how Cam Newton played last year, and they would probably say that it wasn't his best year. It might have been his worst year. Looking at 2016 for Cam Newton, um, he played 15 games. He had 3,500 yards, which was the fourth best total of his career. He only threw for 6.9 yards per uh, throw, he averaged 233.9 yards per game, which was down from last year. 
um, and fourth in his career. He only threw 19 touchdowns, which was the second worst of his career. He threw 14 t- uh, interceptions, which was the second most of his career. So, And, and he had the worst uh, passer rating of his career by far. He was at 99.4 last year. He went down to 75.8 last year um, or this year. And that's just not good enough. 19 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 3,500 yards, and 75.8. That's Mark Sanchez. That is not a elite quarterback, and that is not a top 100 player to me. So um, that's my opinion on the players that made the list that I didn't have on my list. Now, looking at some of the players that were on my list that didn't make their list, Jason Tucker, who I feel is, um, or Justin Tucker, who I feel like is going to be one of the greatest kickers of all time. Um, I only put in in there because I put one kicker, um, and I usually put one special teams player on my list. Justin Tucker is phenomenal. The guy doesn't miss a kick. I think he only missed one kick and it was blocked, and that was against my Patriots. So Justin Tucker is phenomenal. He's the best kicker in the league right now, and I think he at least de- deserves the recognition to be on the top 100. Whitney Merciless had another great season um, with a number of sacks, and he played really, really well um, down the stretch and into the playoffs. Uh, crucial for this defense to be number one in the league. Uh, Merciless had 53 tackles, seven and a half sacks, and one forced fumble. I'm pretty sure he should have been in over Brian Arakpo. Looking at Levante David, I think he's he's a guy that uh, is overlooked because he is a player that is a middle linebacker, outside linebacker in like a a 4-3 defense. But you look at his stats, and he filled the stat sheet even as a 4-3 outside linebacker. 87 tackles, five sacks, four forced fumbles, one interception. Uh, the Tampa Bay defense deserves more recognition for what they had. I think Levante David, also Kwan Alexander, I feel could have made this list. Um, Marcus Cannon, who was the right tackle for the New England Patriots, did not surrender a sack and was one of the main reasons why Tom Brady was upright in that Super Bowl so that he could throw the ball. He also was responsible for shutting down the league leader in sacks in the Super Bowl, Vic Beasley. He does not get enough recognition. Ryan Kerrigan, what else do I have to say about him? The guy produces every single season of his entire career. Another 11-sack season, and for some reason he didn't make the list this year. Uh, Jason Peters, another guy that is consistently a pro bowler and all-pro talent. Uh, A.J. Bouye, who I felt was one of the best corners in the league and, again, was on the number one defense in the league. Uh, Olivier Vernon, defensive end was on one of the best defenses in the league, had eight and a half sacks, one forced fumble, 63 tackles, and really lived up to the contract. Then you go to Leonard Williams, who I feel is one of the better 3-4 defensive ends, had seven sacks, 68 tackles, um, even for a guy, and two forced fumbles, even for a guy that's on the Jets. So that's pretty impressive. Matt Paredes, who this is a guy that's more of a pro football focus pick. He was ranked as their best center in the league in pass and run protection. Um, Matt Paredes, I think, deserved to be somewhere in the hundreds, but I, 100 to 90 range. But I feel I understand why people wouldn't put him there because they don't really know who he is. Like honestly, these players aren't really going to name him off the top of the head. Andrew Whitworth is another another guy. Yes, the Bengals had a down season, but he clearly was good because the Rams paid him a huge contract. David Bakhtiari is a huge head scratcher to why he is not on this list. Um, The number one reason why Aaron Rodgers had all the time in the world to pass the ball, he's one of the best pass-protecting tackles in the entire league. Uh, K.J. Wright is another head-scratcher. I don't understand why this guy continues to be left off the list. Um, He's almost as good as Bobby Wagner, and yet he doesn't get any recognition. Cameron Jordan, another guy, you could say he was the best run-stopping DN in the league. He had the most tackles for loss, Um, and he's a very solid player. Yes, the Saints' defense sucks, but Cameron Jordan is a good player. Uh, Eric Weddle, this is the biggest head scratcher of them all. This guy was ranked as the best safety by uh, Pro Football Focus, and he was an absolute beast for the Baltimore Ravens this year. Have no idea why he didn't make the list. Alex Mack didn't make the list, even for coming in and, and solidifying the offensive line of the best offense in the league and one of the best in history. Jordan Howard, the second leading rusher in the league, didn't make the list. Kawan Short didn't make the list, and also my boy Devin McCourty didn't make the list. So all these guys that made my list did not make their list, which I feel is kind of unreasonable, especially for some of them. Um, I mean, like the, the big ones, I could say Leonard Williams, 
uh, Olivier Vernon, AJ Bouye, Jason Peters, Ryan Kerrigan, um, KJ Wright, Eric Weddle, Cameron Jordan, J- Jordan Howard. These guys should all be certainly on the list, and for whatever reason, they are not on. So it's it's interesting. Um, but also looking at my list compared to their list, and just looking at the top ten, I thought was pretty interesting. And also where they ranked a couple of key players. Tom Brady was ranked number one, which I also had, so I was happy about that. Um, Aaron Rodgers was number two on my list, but for some reason he was only number six on theirs, which is an interesting one. Um, number th- I, They actually had Vaughn Miller ahead of Khalil Mack, despite Khalil Mack winning the Defensive Player of the Year, so that's interesting enough. Um, they had Antonio Brown, I feel, a little bit too high. I feel like Le'Veon Bell was the better player this year, and yet Antonio Brown ranked higher. They did not have Aaron Donald in the top 10, which I did have, and they didn't also have David Johnson in the top 10, which I did have. Instead, they had uh, Odell Beckham and Ezekiel Elliott in their place. Um, I think it's better to give a little bit more recognition to some of the defensive players. You only have two in your top 10, at least put three in there. And David Johnson had 2,000 yards, and you're not going to put him in your top 10? Uh, I don't know about that one. Um as for some of the players that were injured but were on the list for me, I had J.J. Watt and Rob Gronkowski at 11 and 12 because I feel like they're the best players that could have been in the top 10 but were injured. And on their list, they had Gronk at 23 and uh, Watt at 33 or something like that, which I feel is a little bit too harsh. Rather put them high on the list or rather leave them off. That's my opinion on it. That's why I have them at 11 and 12. If you're going to have them on the list, at least have them somewhere in the top 20. Um, that's my opinion on it. Then let's look at some of the other players. Ben Roethlisberger was number 22 on their list, and he was like number 90 on mine, like way too high. I I didn't feel like Ben Roethlisberger was very good this year. Yes, he's still a good quarterback, but I don't think he was an uh, an elite quarterback. Um, They had Dak Prescott at number 14, which I feel is way too high. Um, I had him at number 96 on my list. He was ranked in as the 10th best quarterback in the league. Yes, I mean, the, the guy was good and he led a good team, but was he the primary reason for success? Why was he so high? Um, what are some other guys here that I, I, I think li- there are some other guys that are a little bit out of place on mine. I mean, Marcus Peters I had at 56 and they had at 32. I will give them some recognition for putting Matt Stafford at 20, 31, even though I had him at 63. Um, I feel like Matt Stafford was like my eighth, seventh or eighth best quarterback in the league. And they had them somewhere around. See, this is the difference though. They rank their quarterbacks a lot higher. So Brady, Rogers, Matt Ryan, uh, Dak Prescott, Drew Brees, Derek Carr. Um, so Matt Stafford was their seventh best quarterback. And if you look at my list, I think Matt Stafford was probably my, I'm trying to look through my list here. Uh, Matt Stafford, Matt Stafford. He was my quarterback eight. So that's the difference between how we ranked our quarterbacks. And I had my quarterback seven at 55 in Russell Wilson, and they had Russell Wilson at 24. So there you go. They had a lot of quarterbacks in the top 30. Um, Looking at some of the other choices, I feel like they snubbed Joey Boza from being a lot higher. I had him at 64, and they had him at 100. Same with Malcolm Butler. I had Butler at 65. They had him at 99. Um, And uh, same with Brandon Graham. That might have been the biggest discrepancy in our entire list. 93 on their list and 38 on mine. Brandon Graham had the most pressures in the league last year. Um, And for some reason, he's only at number 38. Or at number 93, sorry. Um, Who else here? Calais Campbell was only here at 83, even though he's on my list at number 33. So you could take that as you wish, but I feel like Calais Campbell is one of the most elite defensive players in the league. Um, Same with Sean Lee. I had him at 30. They had him at 79. I don't really know how many more linebackers are better than Sean Lee in the league. Um, Going through the list, some more. Chris Harris, they have him at 63. I had him at 26 as my second best corner. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, I had him at 39. They had him at 61, despite leading the league in receiving yards. Zach Martin, I had at 28, arguably the best guard in the league, and they had him at 58. Uh, who else here? Amari Cooper, we were, I they had him at 53, a lot higher than I did. I had him at 87. 
Um, Jadavian and Clowney, I had a little bit higher, but I can respect their ranking for him. Michael Bennett, I had a little bit lower just because the stats weren't really there this season. Trent Williams, the best tackle in the league, or at least the second best tackle or third best tackle in the league, they only have you know him at 47. I had him at 22, so that's a big discrepancy for that position. Marshall Yonda, who's the best guard in the league, I think on their list too, only ranked in at 43. I had him ranked in at 15 because he's the best at his position. Um, Akib Talib, I believe, was the best at that position, and he was at 37 for their list and 18 for mine. Tariq Hill, for some reason, came in at 36 for them. Came in at 99 for me. I mean, he's a good kick returner, but how good of a receiver is he? He's good, but he's not great. Um, so that's basically going over the top 100. Also, Tyron Smith was a big discrepancy too, um, in my opinion. I don't think Tyron Smith had his best season last year. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this comparison and contrast between the two lists. Um, which list do you think is better? I'm going to have all the lists up there, of course, so you can see um, the differences. I'll just have the pictures go through while I was talking. Um, so thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed, hit the like button. I just wanted to get this video quickly out there because uh, I wanted to go through the list with you guys. So thanks guys for watching. It's Mitch of the Bottom Line View. Peace out.